In this video, I'll show you how to integrate AWS API Gateway with EC2 instances using AWS Console and Terraform. In the first example, we will use direct public integration. We will create AWS API Gateway and EC2 instance that will have a public IP address. This is the simplest way to integrate those two services, but it has a few drawbacks. For example, there is no easy way to restrict that only API Gateway can access EC2. Your service will be wide open to the internet. First, we will create all those objects manually from the AWS console and then I'll show you how to reproduce exactly the same setup using Terraform. In the second example, we will use private integration using a VPC link and internal network load balancer. In that way, we can restrict access so that only API Gateway can route traffic to our REST API installed on the EC2 virtual machine. Same here. First, we will create this example from the console and then using Terraform. Finally, in the third example, which is my preferred method, we will use afterscaling group with a network load balancer. In this case, if the load increases, for example, the average CPU usage of the EC2 instances reaches 25 or 50 percent, Afterscaling Group will automatically add additional nodes to reduce the load on the system. This approach works very well with stateless applications that can be scaled horizontally. First AWS Console and then Terraform to implement this example. You can find timestamps, source code and commands that I run in the video in the description. First of all, let's take a look at the Node.js app that I prepared for this tutorial. It's a simple app based on the Express.js framework which is used to create REST APIs and a base for many other Node.js frameworks. We have a package.json file with some commands and dependencies, including a body parser to parse JSON payload from the request, package log file with all the dependencies, and the app.js itself with business logic. First, we need to import express and body parser modules. Then initialize the app and declare a port on which our app will listen. Try to use ports higher than 1024 to avoid running your app with unnecessary privileges. The body parser middleware will parse the JSON payload. There are two ways how you can integrate API Gateway with EC2. You can map a single endpoint on the API Gateway to the EC2 or as in this tutorial, we will use proxy mode. We will pass all the arguments from the API gateway to the EC2 service. The first endpoint will be a health check. You can return the JSON payload or I prefer to return the header and 204 status code. It depends on your monitoring system. If it can't use headers, use JSON and vice versa. We will use this endpoint directly to check the status of the app and in the load balancer health check in AWS. In the third example, I want to run a demo with the afterscaling group to show you that if the CPU threshold exceeds, for example, 25%, the AWS afterscaling group will automatically add additional instance to the load balancer to distribute the load. To simulate the load, I want to create a Fibonacci endpoint without any optimizations. It's going to be HTTP POST method that expects the index of the Fibonacci sequence to calculate. It will do it in the background and immediately return the response to the client. Finally, we need to run the app on the previously declared port 8080. I prefer to start most of my tutorials from scratch. Here I have Terraform code to create LBS VPC, Internet Getaway, four subnets, two private and two public in different availability zones, NAT Getaway, and two routes, private and public. You can clone my public GitHub repository and follow along. To create all those resources, you need to initialize the Terraform and run apply. In the first example, we will use public HTTP URI integration method. It's probably the simplest way to integrate API Gateway and any public endpoint such as EC2 instance with public IP address. It has many drawbacks such as that your EC2 instance must have the public IP address and be deployed to the public subnet. Basically, it's already exposed to the internet with a plain HTTP endpoint. API Gateway lets you route traffic and secures it with TLS certificate. For production use, I would suggest taking a look at example 2 or example 3. Let's create a security group for the EC2 instance. Give it a name, my app 
example one and you also must provide a description when you create security groups via console. Make sure that the VPC is correctly selected. The first rule will allow to SSH to the instance and install our Express app. It's again not the best practice to expose port 22 to the internet. Way more secure methods to use AWS Session Manager to SSH to the EC2 instance or a Bastion host. The second rule allows access on port 8080 for our app. For the first example, we must expose it to the internet. There is no simple way to restrict only the API gateway to access this app using this particular public integration. In the following examples, we will use private integrations. Next, we want to create EC2 instance, which is a virtual machine in AWS. Let's call it my app example 1. Select the latest at this moment Ubuntu 22 distribution. You can keep this instance type or update to the new T3 generation. To SSH to the instance, we also need to create a key pair. I will keep RSA since elliptic curves are not supported for Windows yet. Select the security group that we just created. Also, make sure that it will be deployed to one of the public subnets with a default route to the Internet Gateway. Also, check that after assigned public IP is enabled, otherwise you would need to allocate Elastic IP manually and assign it to the EC2 instance. Alright, it looks good. Now we can launch our virtual machine. In a few seconds, built-in health checks should pass and EC2 instance should transition to the running state. It has a public IP that we will use to SSH as well as the private IP. Since we just created a new key pair, we need to update permissions on the private key to restrict use to only current user. Let's grab the public IP from the console. To SSH to the Ubuntu instance in AWS, you need to specify the private key and Ubuntu user. Let's start by updating the package list on Ubuntu. For our app to function, we need to install Node.js and npm package manager. Typically, we use opt directory for the third-party applications that we want to install on Linux machines. Next, we need to get the app from the GitHub repository. Of course, downloading the entire GitHub repo is not the most efficient way, but it works for this tutorial. Also, we use 118 branch to download the source code. In the future, if you get error that this branch does not exist, use the main branch or just remove the dash "-b", argument altogether. Update the owner on that folder. To install all the dependencies for our app, we can use npm ci command. Let's quickly check the node executable. We will use this in the systemd service file. For production use, always use some kind of process management tool, such as built-in systemd, which is a system and session manager for Linux. For example, in case your app crashes, the systemd can restart it for you. There are a couple of directives that you need to pay attention to. First is the Node.js binary and the location of your app. Also, for production use, we need to set node env environment variable to production. We also have a section to restart the app if it exits or simply crashes. Don't forget to enable your service, it will automatically start the Node.js app on Linux restart. Then start the app and check the status 
to make sure it's running. In case it fails to start, you can find the error in the log by running the journal CTL tool with the service name. Now we can test our REST API directly by using the curl and a public IP address of the EC2 instance. It works. It returns 204 status code with a system health header. We can only use HTTP plain protocol. For HTTPS, we need to integrate it with API Gateway or, of course, manage TLS termination on the EC2 instance itself. Let's go ahead and create API Gateway. Select HTTP API. Let's call it API Gateway Example 1. Skip the routes for now. Give it a name for the API Gateway stage, for example, prod, and click Create. Now we need to integrate API Gateway with EC2 instance. First, create a proxy route. Optionally, you can specify what HTTP methods you want to pass to the Express app. In this case, it's any. Then the integration. Select HTTP URI integration method. And provide the public endpoint. In our case, it's EC2 instance public IP address. Don't forget to add a proxy to pass all the arguments to the app. For this example, I don't see a point in creating a custom domain. Let's just quickly verify that integration works and continue to Terraform. You can use API Gateway Endpoint with a staging name to test REST API. It works. Now we can use HTTPS to access our EC2 instance. That's all for the first example. I also want to show you how to create exactly the same setup using Terraform. But before, we need to create a MI image with the Express app. Usually, you would use Packer to create images. For this example, let's just take a snapshot of the app that we already installed on Ubuntu. A My image will be required for the autoscaling group, and optionally we can use it in the second example as well. Give it a name, My App V1, and click Create Image. You can find the image under a My section. It may take up to 5 to 10 minutes. Don't proceed until the image gets available status. Since we will use the same names with Terraform, let's delete all the resources that we have created. Let's start with EC2 instance. Then the security group. You may get an error that the network interface is attached. Just wait a couple of minutes after EC2 termination and try to delete the security group again. Then you need to delete API Gateway. Now we can start with Terraform. As I mentioned before, we're going to recreate the first example, API Gateway integration with EC2 instance using Terraform only. Let's create a security group with the same name, my app example 1. Let's open port 22 and port 8080 for the API access. When using Terraform, you also need to explicitly open egress traffic. Minus 1 means all protocols and 0 means all the ports. Next, we need to create EC2 instance. You need to update AMI with your image ID. You can find it in AdBS console. Then the instance type. Let's use the same T3 micro key pair that we created in the first example. Then the subnet ID. You can get it from the console. Or if you created VPC and subnets using Terraform, you should use resources instead to dynamically pull IDs. We need public IP address, security group, and optionally, you can set a name tag. 
next file for the API Gateway. Same name API Gateway Example 1 and HTTP protocol type. The stage name prod and enable after deployment. For the integration, we need to use HTTP proxy integration type. We can also dynamically pull EC2 public IP address. We want to pass all the HTTP methods. And the connection type is internet, which is equivalent to HTTP URI from the console. It's a little bit in reverse order. We created integration and then defined exactly the same proxy route with any HTTP methods. For convenience, we can use Traform output variable to print out the API gateway endpoint. Let's go to the terminal and apply the code. You can use this endpoint to test integration. Alright, it works as well. We got 204 with system health header from our Express app. If you open AWS console, you can find exactly the same setup as we did it manually in the first part. Same route. For the second example, we're going to create a private API gateway integration with the EC2 instance behind the network load balancer. First, let's create another security group. Let's call it my app example 2. Since we don't need to SSH to the instance and install Express app, we can only open a single 8080 port for the load balancer. For debugging, if you need to SSH to the Ubuntu, you can use AWS Session Manager. For the source, we need to specify the VPC seeder. In our case, it's 10.0.0.0 slash 16. From that seeder, you can expect AWS will perform the health checks for your Express app. That's all, a single rule. Next, we're going to create EC2 instance manually. Give it a name, my app example 2. Then specify the MI image ID that we created in the first example. Same instance type Q3 micro. Optionally, you can specify DevOps key pair, but since we're going to place this EC2 instance in the private subnet without Bastion host or VPN, you won't be able to SSH to the instance. As I said, to solve this, you can use AWS Session Manager. Now let's put it in the private US East 1A subnet and select the second security group. You can click Create Load Balancer and follow the wizard that can help you to create a target group. I don't like that approach. It limits the configuration you can adjust. I prefer to create those objects separately. Let's create a target group first. The target group is used by the load balancer to provide healthy instances to distribute traffic. For the type, keep instances. Let's call this target group My App Example 2. Since we will use a network load balancer that works on layer 4 of the OSI model, we need to change the protocol from layer 7 HTTP to TCP and update the port to 8080. Then select the VPC. For the health checks, we can keep TCP or since we created a dedicated health endpoint, we can use that. In this example, we will manually register EC2 instances with this target group. Select My App Example 2 EC2 instance and include it as pending. It will stay in pending state till you create a load balancer and associate it with this target group. Now the load balancer. Since API Gateway functions on layer 7 and can understand the application request, we can create a network load balancer for our REST API. Let's call it the same My App Example 2. Since we will use private integration, we don't need to expose our Express app directly to the internet. Select the internal type. It will create a network load balancer in the private subnets and it can only be accessed within the VPC. Let's select availability zones and private subnets.
here you also need to select the private subnet. Next is a listener TCP protocol, then 8080 port and the target group that we just created. Before creating the private integration, wait till the network load balancer become active. Now the API gateway. It's going to be the same HTTP API type with corresponding name. API Gateway Example 2. Skip the routes as well. And let's use the staging stage name. Since it's a private integration, we need to create VPC link first. For the subnets, select the ones where you created your network load balancer. In my case, it's a private A and private B. And you also need to choose the security group. Make sure that your security group allows all egress traffic. It will take a few minutes for the VPC link to become available. Next is pretty much the same proxy route. But for the integration, we will select a private resource. Then select the listener of the network load balancer. And don't forget to choose the VPC link. For this example, let's also create a custom domain for our API Gateway. First, we need to request a public certificate to secure API Gateway with TLS. You can use the main name that is hosted outside of AWS and Route 53 and create a CNAME record. For this example, I will use my existing Route 53 public hosted zone AntonPutra.com. Specify the fully qualified domain name and keep DNS validation. Since I use Route 53, I can simply click Create Records to prove that I own this domain to get a public certificate. You can find those records in your hosted zone. In a couple of minutes, your certificate should be issued. Now we can create a custom domain for the API Gateway. A domain name should match the one you put on certificate. Then select the certificate and click Create. To complete a custom domain setup, you also need to configure API mapping. Select the API gateway and a stage that you want your custom domain to point to. Before you can test your API gateway, make sure that your EC2 instance is healthy and registered in your load balancer. We have a single target and its health status indicates that it's ready to accept incoming requests. You also need to create an alias record to point to the API gateway. If you host your domain outside of AWS, you can create a CNAME record. Choose the type, region and API gateway with your custom domain. To make sure that DNS is properly configured, you can use dig command. Alright, now you can access the API gateway using our domain. 
it should return the same 204 status with the system health header equal to true. That's all for this example. Next, I'm going to show you how to reproduce this setup using Terraform. Let's go ahead and clean up. First, let's delete the load bouncer. If at some point you get an error, just wait a few minutes and try to delete it again. Then the rest of the resources that we created for this example. First is the security group. We don't need to SSH and only need to open port 8080. You can dynamically pull VPC seeder from the Terraform resource. Then the EC2 instance. The difference here is we're going to place it in the private subnet. Then the target group with the same health check. We can use the target group attachment resource to register EC2 instances. Then the private network load balancer. And the listener to forward traffic to our target group. Next file for the API getaway. With staging stage. Then we need to create a VPC link with private subnets and a security group. And the API gateway private resource integration. Finally, the proxy route. We also going to request a public certificate using Terraform. To get a reference to the existing Route 53 hosted zone, we can use data resources. Then, to prove the ownership, we need to create CNAME records that AWS provides. If you have other resources that depend on the active certificate, you can use validation resource. It will query DNS and wait till the older records are present. The last Terraform file for this example is a custom domain. We can use the previous validation resource to wait until the certificate is ready before we can use it in the custom domain resource and the LS record for the API gateway. Then the API mapping and the output variable with custom domain. That's all the Terraform that we need to reproduce example 2. Let's go ahead and run Terraform apply. Also, let's wait till the EC2 instance is healthy before accessing the API gateway. Otherwise, you get an error that the service is not available. All right, it works. The last example is the most sophisticated approach to integrate API Gateway with EC2 instances. For production use, I would highly recommend using this method. Let's go ahead and create another security group which has the same rules as in example 2.
For the autoscaling group, we can use either the launch configuration or the launch template. AWS recommends to use the last one. We would need it to create EC2 instances automatically. Let's give it a name, my app example 3. Then select the MI image. You can include instance type in the template, but I would recommend specifying the resource allocation in the autoscaling group itself, cause you may be using the same launch template in multiple environments. For example, staging would require fewer resources than production. You can also include DevOps key pair, but at this point it's totally optional. And the security group. Next, we need a target group. It's going to be exactly the same target group as we created in the previous example, with one exception. We won't register EC2 instances manually. We will create autoscaling group and bind it with this target group. All the instances created by the autoscaling group will be automatically registered here. For the health check, let's use a plain TCP check. It will only check if the port is open. That's all, don't register any targets, just click create. Next is the identical network load balancer. I missed this again. You want to specify private subnets. Now the autoscaling group. Give it a name and select the launch template with Express app. Private subnets. Here you can either specify the CPU and memory resources or a type. Next, attach this autoscaling group to the load balancer. To test autoscaling, set maximum capacity to 3 or more. The autoscaling group will adjust desired capacity based on the scaling policy that we will specify later. For example, if the average CPU usage across all the EC2 instances in this group exceeds 25%, add additional instance. Skip notifications and tags. Let's verify that we have registered targets before creating API Gateway. Target is healthy. We can create API Gateway, custom domain name and a similar VPC link.
before testing the Autoscaling group, make sure that you can access the service. Go to the Autoscaling group to the Monitoring tab, where you can watch CPU usage. Right now, the CPU usage is close to zero. To simulate a high load, let's use the Fibonacci endpoint to calculate a large number, for example, 100. In a few minutes, you should see CPU increase. When it reaches 25%, the autoscaling group will create another EC2 instance. Now we have two virtual machines in the third load balancer. That's all for this example. Now let's clean up and recreate using Terraform. Terraform code will look very similar except for the autoscaling group. First is the security group. Then the launch template with MIID, DevOps key pair and the security group. Network load balancer with the empty target group. Then the autoscaling group. Specify min and max size and override launch template and instance type. And point to the empty target group. Autoscaling policy to scale up if the CPU usage exceeds 25%. The rest of it is the same.
we're done with Terraform, let's apply and test. It works as in previous example, additional is 2 instance was created to distribute traffic. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.